doing another codality problem uh, today uh, using JavaScript. This uh, problem is a ray rotation. So what the problem asks is given an array and a number, we will shift the array right by the number passed into the array. So for example, we'll have array A and a number K passed into the array, into the function. And we will shift the array right K times and anything that passes the end of the array will be moved to the beginning of the array. So for example, We have in an array one, two, three, four, five. And k is equal to three. So the first shift of the array, um, because we're shifting it right three times, will make it so that we are left with the array. Um, five, one, two, three, four for the first shift. So this would be shift one. The next shift for shift two our four at the end will move to the beginning and three will be at the end. So we will be have for our second shift, we will have the array four, five, one, two, three. And then for our third shift, our third and final shift, may I add, the three will be uh, shifted off and moved to the beginning of the array. And we'll be left with three, four, five, one, and two. That will be our final array if uh, k was equal to three. If k was equal to two for the same array, our final array simply wouldn't go as far. So we'd be left with the following array, four, five, one, two, three. So as you can see, this is a shifting problem. Um, so how will we solve this? So let's think through it. Basically, when I see this, the thing that comes to my mind is a Q. Um, if you know what a Q is, um, it stands for first in, first out. So basically, it'll be it's a data structure similar to an array, but um, when you push in a number, um, it adds it to the top of the queue. So, if, for example, we added in seven to the queue. Um, we would have uh, which had the values one, two, three. already, the seven would go at the beginning. So we would have a queue consisting of seven, one, two, and three. But when we wanted to remove things from the queue, we would only be able to remove the objects that had been put in first. And since it's first in, first out, the three would be removed. So we'd be left with a queue of seven, one, two, and no three. Okay, so this might have been a bit confusing since I started off with a queue that already had objects. So let's do it this way. We have an empty queue, right? We add in the value three first. So we'll push that into the queue. And so we'll have a queue consisting of just a three. Next, we add in a two. We push in a two, right, into our queue. So we have a queue consisting of two and three. And then we push in a one, 
So we have a queue consisting of one, two, and three. But note the order in which they were added to the queue, right? The three was added in first, followed by the two, and followed by the one. So the one was the last thing um, um, added to the queue. And queue, the annotation for queue is first in, first out. So whenever we want to remove an object, we'd have a function called remove, right? And that would always remove the object that was most recently, which was first added to the queue out of all the objects. So if we called the remove, we would be left with a queue of uh, one and two, and the object three would be returned to us, right? And second, yeah, um, if we were to remove again, we would receive the two, and we'd only have a queue left with one, and then we repeat. So that's what a queue is. So we're going to try and create something similar to a queue uh, with this function. So let's diagram this out. I guess we already did. So we're going to create a queue like object and it, this is how it's going to function and by doing that whenever we remove an object it will automatically um, take it from the end and then we could re add that to the queue and it'll insert it at the beginning so by based on how many um, based on how many um, shifts we have it's just uh, remove and then a push, and then that'll shift the array automatically, and then we can return our, our um, array uh, shifted by that much. For this question, um, we're looking at correctness rather than efficiency. So, okay. So now we know what we're going to do. How are we going to do it, right? So in JavaScript, we already have we have the following functions that we could use to simulate a queue, right? We have push, which adds an object to the end of an array. We have pop, which removes an object from the end of the array. And we have reverse, right? Because we're not looking at efficiency currently. So we're going to use these three functions in order to sort of create the desired behavior um, that we want in order to solve this problem. Okay, so one, we should, what I'm saying is given an array of like one, two, three, the first thing we want to do is to be able to remove the last object. So we'll pop off um, the end of the array, right? Two, we need to add this to the beginning of the array. So we can use a reverse um, to make it so that the end of the array becomes the beginning. So then we could simply push it back on. And then we'll use a push. There's an easier way to do this, but I think this would achieve our desired result with the least code. So now let's look at what we're doing exactly. So I'm following along. We're going to use, so we have an array of one, two, three. Let's, uh, let's give an example of following these steps. We have an array of one, two, three. And then here after step one, we're left with our array of one and two since we popped off the end. And we have the uh, value of three, which was the object that was popped off. Right now, we're going to reverse our array, so we'll be left with an array of two and one. So then, when we push our actual object back on, we're going to be left with two, one, and three. And then our final step will be another reverse. Right, so then we will be left with three one and two and that should be our a reversed array 
and we will repeat this process as many times repeat k times okay so we'll do it this way and if um, the actual checker complains we'll find ways to optimize it or fix it up okay so we're gonna have a loop for i is equal to zero and while i is less than k which is the value that is passed in in order to tell us how many times we should shift right i plus plus so this is our shifts right now we're going to basically take this these steps and we're going to manifest them into actual code right so one pop the end of the array right so we're going to have our our end well we don't care about efficiency so i'll just declare it in here let our end equal to a dot pop right next we're going to reverse it so a dot reverse boom right so our array are reversed step three now we have our reversed array we're going to do a dot push our end okay and then we're going to have our step four. A dot reverse again. All right, and our step five is taken care of by the external loop. Okay, so it repeated k times. All right, and then Finally, we'll just return a, right? Let's see how, let's also use the console.log to see what array we're left with uh, right before we return it. Let's run the code. All right, so it looks like it worked. Let's comment this out. Run the code again. All right, let's submit our task and see how a codality judges it. Okay, so we got an 87%. So let's see why are we, lo we lost points. And we forgot an actual end case. Empty array. So we forgot an edge case. So let's go back and fix that. So there's an edge case in which the array passed in is empty. There's a bug on the site currently, so I have a workaround. Okay, let's start the test. Go to JavaScript. Confirm. So we made the mistake of skipping over thinking about edge cases empty array so let's see what we return if the array is empty okay let's have an if statement here if a dot so we can have an empty array or a null 
would they give us a null? So let um, our length a dot length length equals zero return empty. So let a equal a or empty array. So by using this, basically if a is a null, we're going to have an empty array. And if a dot length, if it does pass in the array, and the length of the array is zero, we're going to just return an empty um, array. So let's try that. Should pass all the tests. It did not. A has already been declared. Let's use um, that. We don't have to declare it. Invalid result type. Integer expected. Invalid result type. Undefined found. So, why is it complaining? So we have our array. If a is equal to a or a equal to defined perhaps you're missing a return question. So we have our return a, so a dot length. No, a is equal to undefined. Okay, because we can't use length on an undefined array, so that wasn't working as expected okay so this didn't work so a is null or undefined run and that should take care of everything that was causing problems before and get us a hundred percent And we still got 87. Hmm. Tested program terminate with. F okay, so um, basically what I did is I added in a check for length is equal to zero, like I had before. But now I'm also checking for null and undefined conditions in case they're passed in. And in those cases, when they are passed in, we will just return the array rather than doing anything because those are invalid arrays, right? Um, so yeah, this should work. Because the test condition checked for all of those. It, even if it's invalid array, it wants the result back as was given. Okay, so we got 100%. So I'm going to do this again uh, in the next video except this time I'm not going to use the pop, the reverse, the push, and the reverse again. Because at some companies they don't want you to use existing functions in the language. What they're trying, they want you to do is do it at a more basic level, as in uh, uh, without utilization of any functions, just basic code. So um, yeah, 